And I'm Carrie. And we are Paranormal Chicks. Episode 40. We're here. We made it. 40's the new 30. Mm-hmm. Let's get into it. Oh, I was just going to start this out with two recommendations, because apparently I am the recommendation queen. Oh, I have something to say about that in a second, but go. Okay. Don't steal my thunder, because we know I'm not, you I'm like not. to. I promise I'm not. I'm working on it. 2019. <laughs> Don't even go there. <laughs> like one of my one of my coworkers the other day, I said I was going to get to work really early one Saturday. And she said, "Tell that lot of somebody that believes it." <laughs> okay, these are not podcast recommendations, but Killing Eve. It's a BBC America show available on Hulu. Mm-hmm. So good. It has Sandra O oh and this girl. I don't know her name now, but I love her. Love her so much. Did you watch a show with her? Another show with her. (laughs) And it's called 13. And it's about her being kidnapped for 13 years. Oh, shit. Yeah. Well, not like the actress. No, no, no. I know. Yeah. Is it based on a real story? No. Damn. Well, I don't think so. Well, I mean, not damn. Okay, that sounded terrible. (laughs) Damn, somebody didn't get kidnapped for 13 years? But you know what I mean. Yeah. It's only one season and there's not going to be a second season. But it wraps up. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah. Don't you hate that when there's not an mm-hmm. ending and they don't get picked back up? Oh, yeah. I mean, it was good enough that I was like, and when's the second season come out? You know? And then mm-hmm. it was like, it's not. They've all moved on to other things. Ugh. And I was like, oh, yeah. Like, Killing Eve. She's in that now. Yeah. But, which, that needs a second season. I think it's going to have one. So, there you go. So, BBC America, Killing Eve, and 13. 13's on... Amazon Prime. Okay. Hulu, Amazon Prime. Get you some. Okay, so I have to say, Tally for Donna. Oh, shit. The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel (laughs) is fucking good. Right? Oh, my gosh. I have been, like, downloading the episodes and then watching them while I'm on lunch. Like, Mm -hmm. working while, you know, through lunch. And, oh, my God. So funny. Yes. So freaking good. First of all, I love it. I know, I know. <laughs> like, I've told, like, four people about it. <laughs> so good. I've watched the first season twice and the cool. second season once. Yeah. I'm almost through the first season. So good. I was so scared the second season wouldn't be as good, but mm-hmm. so funny. The girl, the main girl, is she's good. Yes. She's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. And I, I mean, like... I laugh out loud at it. Yes. It's funny. Her little sidekick. Oh, my gosh. Yes. From Freaks and Geeks. So funny. Oh, just wait. Just wait till the second season. Okay. <laughs> Tiffany called me the other day. I was like, have you finished? I was like, girl, I finished that in two days. And we were talking about everything. And I was like, like, I mean, we were talking over each other. Just yeah, because so, like, it's so good. Up. Oh, my gosh. Well, it's good. Tally for Donna because that shit was good. <laughs> or is good because I'm still watching. Yay. Oh, you know what else is good? Ooh, what? Our new Patreoners. Uh, yeah, they are. They're not good. They're great. Okay. Not trademarked. I mean. <laughs> Except I think it is. It is. I meant <laughs> not to infringe on the trademark. Oh, that's funny. Okay, so shout out and thank you so much, Stephanie J. Woot woot. And thank you for upping your Patreon, Michelle C. We see you, girl, and we love you. Yeah, so y'all are the best. Thank you so much. If you want an episode shout out, get bonus content, announce an episode, all of those wonderful things. Mm-hmm. Discounts on merch. Yeah, girl. Head on over to patreon.com slash APC. The APC. The podcast. APC oh, shit. podcast. <laughs> we'll link it because <laughs> she sucks. <laughs> no, really, it's www.patreon.com forward slash the APC podcast. What she said. And don't forget merch, too. It's Christmas. Mm-hmm. This episode will be coming out Christmas Eve. So if you're a late shopper, <laughs> you can always buy it and then print it out. I've totally done that before. Oh, Print out have, a picture of it and wrap yeah. the picture. Mm-hmm. We like, have to. It's coming. <laughs> well, technically we had it, but it was a washer and dryer for my parents. Mm-hmm. You even pitched in on it. Mm-hmm. But uh, so we printed the things. My mom was like, what? A washer? And my dad opened his and it was like. A dryer. What? And then, like, they Figured realized. It yeah. yeah. It was so cute. They're like, yeah, it's in the garage. Yeah. It's set up. It's. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, speaking of 
Christmas. Mm -hmm. If you are in the Patreon family, the Creepinati, Mm -hmm. you got a bonus (laughs) Christmas. You got a bonus Christmas episode. And I think it's kind of a shit show. It might be. (laughs) As of this moment, Will hasn't finished editing it, probably because he's like, What the fuck, girls? Oh my God. Did y'all actually live this? (laughs) Yes. I'm just going to tell you that the title is Christmas with the Krampets. (laughs) 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 Oh, God. And that's available to all Patreon nurse. Okay. Can we just get into this shit? Because I got a corrections. Oh, fuck. (laughs) Wait, is it not Damer? (laughs) No, it's about as bad. Oh, fuck. (laughs) Doing 40, right. I mean, at least it's not 700 years later. At least it's one week later. (laughs) Yes, okay. Okay. It's just the story everyone's looking forward to, but how no fear. I know. Carrie's here to fuck it up. (laughs) Okay. So, if you remember, last week we did John Bonet. Duh. How could I forget? The story that all of you patiently waited a whole week for started off very wrong. Oh, fuck. So, it wasn't two years. Apparently, I missed a number. And it was 22 years to the day. Oh, God. (laughs) Yeah, it was 1977. Oh. And let me just tell (laughs) y'all, I fucking searched, and I searched, and I'm talking like I was going into websites, like I was like four pages deep in Google. You know how you like, you (laughs) go for, I mean, I'm not, like, not to my own horn, but I'm pretty good at finding stuff. Okay, let me just say. Except for that one time. Well, that, but also... She couldn't find her Crocs earlier in there in <laughs> front of her favorite chair. <laughs> so take that with what you will. Okay, well, that involved me having to walk the house. And so it was more of just like, put your head in a room, put the light on. <laughs> but we were in that room. <laughs> oh, good. Okay, okay. And okay. the light was on. In my defense, searching the internet involves sitting down. So anyway, I combed the internet for this and legit every single article of it had basically the same three lines about her it so when i told y'all she was born she lived and she died no spoiler alert she was never alive she did not die (laughs) (laughs) so tally for not carrie last week what what did you find i don't know okay In a second, it'll make sense why I got confused. Oh, Lord. The year, I just got it all fucking wrong. (laughs) Okay. So, the McReynolds, who were Santa and Mrs. Claus. Mm Mm-hmm. Creepy. Creep, creep. Mm Mm-hmm. They had three kids, apparently. Okay. Which I was, like, I don't know, 15 hours in searching before I found the kids' names. Tristan and somebody. I forgot who the other boy's name was. But, so, two boys and a girl. The girl... The subject of the story, her name was Jill, and they were living in Longmont, Colorado. So Jill was nine, and she was walking with her friend who was 10 years old. Don't know her name. Couldn't find it anywhere. They were walking to her friend's house. What? You're- Did I say 77 earlier? Yeah. I can't fucking do math. It's 74. <laughs> Jesus Christ. In this whole podcast, because I suck. Who are you, me? I don't. Y'all, I'm sorry. <laughs> So, the two were abducted. Oh, fuck. Mm-hmm. While they were in capture, the friend was sexually assaulted. Oh. And Jill was forced to watch. After her friend was sexually assaulted, they were just let go. Like, they just were dumped beside on the side of the road and were found by somebody. And, wow. yeah. But they weren't, like, physically... Assaulted in the, like, by weapon. Right. I mean, he, the, she was sexually assaulted, and, and Jill had to watch, but but they weren't harmed other than that. Right. They were just, like, they were dumped. They weren't, they were not, like, harmed as far as, like, a knife or, gu- you know. Yeah. But, yeah, they just, like, dumped them beside, on the wow. side of the road, and they were found. 
And so they were, so there was one article that said that a man was arrested, like in questioning with it, Mm -hmm. but nobody was ever charged. It's, it's like unsolved. Yeah. So, so that happened, like I said, 22 years to the day before John Monet's killing. What got me confused was Janet McReynolds, who was Mrs. Claus, had written a play called Hey Rude, like Hey Jude, uh. but Hey Rude. <laughs> and it was about the kidnapping, torture, murder of another girl. Uh. And they were all so similar yeah. that that's part of what made them like, hmm. Yeah. Because her daughter abducted, like, again, same day, 22 years be- you know, before. Mm-hmm. And then she wrote this play because she was in the – film and whatever kind of industry yeah. in Colorado. And so she she wrote this play, but then it never, like, she never sold it. Right. And then when when John Bonet was murdered, they were really sketch about it. Like, mm. they wouldn't share the script with the media or anything like that. Like, it was, they were yeah. weird about it. Because, they, I mean, they were already odd people. Right. You know? But even one of the articles that I found was like, this is so weird. Like, where is Jill? Right. Because apparently their sons were even questioned about John Bonet. Mm. And then the son, Tristan, had a criminal record for, like, robbery and stuff. And so they were looking into them. So they kind of looked into the whole family. But they're like, why? It was like a Reddit thread or something. And they were like, why has Jill never done an interview? Nobody right. knows anything about her. I can't find where she is. I couldn't find anything, like... You know, usually, like, even a freaking Wikipedia page will right. be like, hey, this is Bill McReynolds, and he has these three kids, and there's their names and their ages and all that. Cannot find any of wow. that. Cannot find who was arrested in connection with it. Could not find anything. Whoa. So, again, even the websites I found were like, "What? this is weird. Yeah. Okay. So, what I'm going to do today, since that was, okay, end of story. No. <laughs> What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to do the story of Sylvia Likens, who is the victim that Janet McReynolds wrote the play about. Ooh, okay. Still still involved, still entangled. Well, because this is who, at first, like whenever I was, you know, reading through and all that, this is who I thought was their daughter at first. Yeah. And so that's why I got, I don't know I don't know what I did. Okay, so the story that I'm about to do, that the play was based on, that Janet McReynolds wrote, Mm -hmm. this is a true story. And I just want to say trigger warning because it's really heavy. There's a lot of abuse in it. So just if you feel like you can't listen, skip on to Donna's story. If you get to a part where you're starting to feel uncomfortable, skip on to Donna's part. All right, so Sylvia was born January 3rd, 1949. She was the third child of five. She was born to carnival workers. So she had two older siblings, Diana and Danny, and then she had younger siblings, Jenny and Benny, (laughs) who were fraternal twins. I mean, Avi, male and female, they weren't identical. The family was pretty poor, and the parents had a pretty rough marriage. They moved a lot from location to location. I mean... They were carnies. Can you say carnies? I think I, we've had this discussion before, and I think it's not okay. Oh. Well, they were workers of the carnival. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like, never mind. I think it is okay. Well, tell us if we're wrong. So, again, they had financial problems. They moved a lot. Jenny, who was one of the younger twins, mm-hmm. she had polio. Oh, gosh. So funny that it's Jenny, and she has polio. Isn't that what... No. Oh. I don't know. You know I've never seen this movie. She's talking about Forrest Gump, y'all. <laughs> First of all, he I did just, not have polio. I just knew he had braces on his legs and stuff. Yeah, but it wasn't from polio. Oh, never mind. It's not funny. I'm not funny, like, haha. But like, interesting. Yeah. Ironic. Yeah. Whatever. Anyway, none of the above. Keep going with your story. Okay. When the parents had work with a carnival, they would board Sylvia and Jenny so they wouldn't have to deal like deal with them. I'm sure well, this is me putting my own twist onto it, but I assume that the 
boy children would help out with the carnivals and stuff, you know? Yeah. They're probably like the heavy men or something. I don't know. Heavy lifting. So, but most of the time when they would board them, it would be with relatives, like their grandma and, you know, people like that so that they could, like, keep up with their schoolwork and stuff. Sylvia would try to earn money by babysitting and ironing for people. Um, no, no. thank you. No, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'd be like, oh, okay, here's an iron. 30 minutes on delicate or whatever just to tumble that wrinkle right on out of there. That's well, my kind of ironing. Well, Sylvia was born in 1949, so. I don't know when the washer and dryer were invented. Well, I mean, I think they had them, but I, I think a lot of houses then, I mean, I don't know. I wasn't born. My parents were. Your parents were. Anyway. Okay. Useless knowledge. <laughs> but no, I think that they, like all the houses, most of the houses had washers but didn't have dryers. They still hung them out. Oh. Yeah. Anyway. In July of 1965, Sylvia's parents separated. Sylvia and Jenny lived with their mom after the parents separated. But because they were so poor... The mom was caught shoplifting. And then she found a genie in a bottle? No. And was arrested and put in jail. Could have found a genie there. While she was in jail, her, the dad, Lester is his name. Lester and Betty are the parents. Lester found another, religion? no, another okay, carnival sorry. job. Also could be religion. Could be. <laughs> I thought I was funny. Yeah, okay, you're the only one. No. <laughs> Just kidding. While Betty is in the pen doing hard time, mm-hmm. Lester gets the job opportunity with another carnival. And so he's like, okay, I'm going to take this. This is a good opportunity for us to put this family back together, get some money. But what do I do with these kids? Diana married, moved on, living her best life. The two boys living with the grandparents, and so it left him going, well, now what the fuck do I do with Sylvia and Jenny? Well, there's two different accounts of how this proceeds. The first one is, it's July 1965, and Sylvia and Jenny are hanging out with this girl in the neighborhood named Darlene McGuire. Oh, she's a bad influence, I can tell already. Darlene introduces the two girls to a woman named Paula Beneswaski. Also known as Abdul. Also known as, I ain't saying that right. (laughs) Beneswaski? Something. So they met Paula. They went back to her house, drank some soda, listened to some records, hung out. She heard about their kind of, their... Issues with not really having anywhere to go because her dad's gone off or is, is trying to go to this carnival. Mom's in jail. And so she was like, well, y'all can spend the night here. Well, in this version of events, Lester came into town because this version of events makes it sound like when they separated, Betty took Sylvia and Jenny and fled with them. Uh-huh. Instead of, like, so essentially kind of kidnapping them from their dad, you know. Yeah. But, so they, so in this situation, Lester comes into town because he tracks them down. Ooh. And when he, he ran into the Darlene McGuire who recognized him and was like, oh, hey, they're down at Paula's house. And so he was like, okay, went down there. Paula introduced herself as Miss Wright with a W. And they started chatting. And then they decided that she would take... Sylvia and Jenny for $20 a week. Like she would board them basically while he went to work and mom was in jail. Now, I do want to say, y'all know I love stories with a lot of names. Actually, I hate them. But a couple of times in a couple of different articles, Paula is also called Gertrude. Mm. And in a few of the articles, she's known as Paula. Most of them, she's known as Gertrude. So... From here on out, Paula is Gertrude. (sighs) Okay. The other version of events is that a mutual friend introduced the two, the dad and Gertrude, a.k.a. Paula, who was calling herself Gertrude Wright. Mm. Okay. 
and that she lived in this big old rental house. She had seven kids. There's like a whole backstory on her about her kids and marriages. And she had like seven kids and had six miscarriages. Like there's like a whole backstory on her. We're not going into. But she had seven kids, lots of names, not going into them. And so he's like, wow, well, she's got all these kids. She's taking good care of them. Like, Mm -hmm. you can you take care of my kids? 20 bucks a week. (laughs) Thanks. And so Gertrude's like, poor shit. And so she's like, yes, please. And so, like, he didn't, like, go in the house. He didn't do anything. He was just like, big house, lots of kids. Here's Here, I'll pay you. Yeah. And so at first, things were going really great. The girls... Were played outside. They went to the park. They got to keep listening to the records they were listening to. Sylvia would help out around the house. Well, that was the first week that it was all Rosie playing outside shit. The second week, the $20 check didn't come. So, old Gertrude loses her shit. And she's like, I took care of you two bitches for nothing. So, when she when the check didn't come and she lost her shit... She took the girls upstairs, made them lay across the bed, lift their skirts, and pull their underwear down around their ankles. And then she basically gave them, like, a really bad spanking, but, like, beat the shit out. Like, it, you know, it wasn't just, like, I mean, we've talked about spankings and all that before, but, like, this was, like, a, this was a beating. Yeah. On their bare bottoms. God Mm -mm. almighty, could you imagine? Mm -mm. So, well, so after that happened, the money order arrived the next day. (gasps) Oh, shit. Yep. She's like, oh, here's a little balloon to sit on so your ass doesn't hurt so bad. Well. Or the damage was already done. Yeah. So at, right after that, Betty gets out of jail. She and Lester come and check on the girls. But the girls didn't say anything about the beating. You can kind of assume that they were like, do not you do not fucking tell. Yeah. So they didn't. After the beating incident... The next week, Sylvia and Jenny went through the neighborhood getting old Coke bottles so that they could sell them and buy candy. When they got home with the candy, Gertrude is like, where the fuck did you get the candy? Who'd you steal that from? And they're like, we didn't steal it. We, you know, got the bottles and made money and blah, blah, blah. Well, she didn't believe them, so she did the same thing. Oh, my God. Pennies down, all that, beat them with, the, with the, like a wooden paddle. And then anytime they did anything that she didn't like, she would beat them like that. Now, Gertrude was a sickly woman. Like, nothing ever said what she had. We don't know. But she was very thin, like sunken in eyes. Like, she just was kind of like a, like a, I'm picturing like Skeletor. Yeah. And so sometimes if she was too weak to beat the kids, to beat Sylvia and Jenny, she would get her oldest daughter, Paula, to do it. Remember I said she had seven kids? So she named her first, her oldest, after herself? <laughs> the first part was talking about the daughter. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. I need to go crawl under a rock. It's okay. Okay, so... Paula is not Gertrude. No. Paula is Gertrude's offspring. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. Moving on. Paula is going to beat him now. Fuck that bitch. Yeah, fuck her. (laughs) Fuck her and her other name. (laughs) (laughs) So not long after the whole candy issue, Gertrude's kids came to her because, oh, they also all went to church together because, of course, fuck them. The kids came to Gertrude. And said that they were disgusted with the amount of food that Sylvia ate at church. Oh, my God. And so Gertrude was like, she was pissed. And she told Sylvia, like, how could you do something to ruin your physical appearance like that? Oh, my God. And so. Fucking fat shamer. And the thing is, though. Okay. So word on the street is because Sylvia was pretty and, you know, young and. Yada, yada, yeah. yada. Gertrude was jealous of her and was trying to live vicariously through mm-hmm. her. And so she didn't want her to yeah. get heavy. And so she made Sylvia eat this huge hot dog piled with all these condiments. Not in a good way. In a bad way. Yeah. And when Sylvia was eating it, she vomited. 
Ooh, and she made her eat it? Gertrude made her eat the vomit. Oh, oh God. Okay. Yep. That's nasty. I'm not a cat or a dog. And even then, that's still nasty. That's still gross. I'm like, yeah. no. So the parents came back later to visit. Never talked about it. Oh, my gosh. I would have been like, this bitch made me eat my own vomit. And then I would have vomited while talking about that. Yep. So at this point, Gertrude's kind of honed in on Sylvia as her release of whatever. Yeah, her little scapegoat. Yeah. And so one of the one time the incident that is kind of thought to have been like the trigger for the, whatever yeah. reason for Gertrude, even after the hot dog and all that incident, is that supposedly in August of 1965, she overheard Sylvia say that she had once allowed a boy to fill her up. Mm. Well, that made Gertrude lose her shit more than ever before. Screaming, cussing at her, told her that she was a sex worker and that, you know, just belittled her and told the rest of the house of the kids that Sylvia was pregnant because she had let a boy touch her vagina. Oh, my gosh. And that's when Gertrude attacked Sylvia, repeatedly kicking her in the vagina. Oh, my gosh. And then after she beat her from that, Sylvia attempted to sit down. And Paula threw her out of the chair and said, you ain't fit to sit in chairs. Oh, my God. And so from then on, Sylvia was only allowed to sit down when she had permission. Holy fuck. Yeah. And so from from there, Gertrude allowed all the kids to beat Sylvia however they wanted. Oh, my God. And Like she was, quote, their plaything, and they could play any games they wanted to with her. Whoa. So they would play games where... They would beat her, push her down the stairs. Oh, my gosh. Some of the kids, I guess, that were old enough would were smokers, and they would put their cigarettes out on oh, no. Sylvia. Oh, that's like they, and, and it was not all the time. Like, just, it was, what they said was, it was their way of reminding her that she was a whore. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Yep. And... I feel like this is the beginning to, like, a Marvel Comics, like, superhero thing where they had, like, this terrible thing and then... It's not. They come back and they have, like, all this power and, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. I know it's not going to be, but, like, oh, gosh. And, you know, when they would put their cigarettes out on her, Gertrude would just laugh and encourage them to, like, abuse her even more and more and more. Oh, my God. One time, Paula who basically used her as a punching bag, hit her so hard that she broke her hand. And then when her hand was in the cast, she would beat Sylvia with the cast. So it was even harder. Gertrude would make her take scalding hot baths to, quote, cleanse her of her sins. Oh, my God. Bless it. And so, like I said, she told other people that Sylvia Gertrude did, that she was highly promiscuous, that she was pregnant. Like, she would make Sylvia sit there and listen to her preach these sermons to her about the filthiness of being a sex worker and women in general. Oh, my gosh. Supposedly, too, one of the days that she beat Sylvia so much where she was, like, kicking her in the vagina and stuff was because, again, this is okay. But that Sylvia and Jenny had told their classmates that Paula and the second oldest daughter, Stephanie, had been having sex with boys for money. Mm. And that, like, that was part of, like, they, that, there was a, that was part of their revenge. And then supposedly, Stephanie, who was the second oldest daughter, her boyfriend, Coy Hubbard, when he found out what supposedly Sylvia and Jenny had said, He came over to the house, and Gertrude let him beat the shit out of Sylvia. Oh, my god! Then encouraged him to come over and beat Sylvia whenever he pleased. And what? mm -hmm, Mm-hmm. I... Mm-hmm. He was taking judo. Mm Mm-hmm. 
He, yeah, so he was like practicing judo and would practice on Sylvia. Would like throw her against walls, putting her in chokeholds, what knocking her fuck? unconscious with a broom handle. Like he just did whatever he wanted to do. So around this time, too, Sylvia's best friend, Anna Cisco. And how are they allowed to have a boyfriend? Because they're not Sylvia. Because no, I, it's not. I know. I know, I know. But because it's Sylvia's the scapegoat. She's the one yeah. that is like held to quote a higher standard, but not really. Mm-hmm. So Sylvia's best friend had somehow Gertrude had gotten her alone long enough to convince her that Sylvia had been telling the boys at school that Anna's mom was a quote whore. Oh my gosh. And so Gertrude told Anna. Like, to beat Sylvia up. And so she did. All these people I know. beating her up. I know. And then she did the same thing with another one of, well, this one was Paula's friend. Her name was Judy Duke. Same thing. Said that Sylvia was spreading rumors about the kid's mom. And so Judy and Sylvia got in a fist fight. During the fight, Gertrude told Jenny that she had to punch Sylvia. So, sisters. You know, she told her yeah. that she had to punch her. And at first, Jenny was like, absolutely not. And then, so Gertrude started beating Jenny until Jenny hit Sylvia. Oh, my God. Yep. Like, this is the episode where I say, oh, my God. Over and over and over again. Yes, because this is Mm -hmm. ridiculous. Yep. So, here's one of the kickers. Oh, wait. There's way more. (laughs) No pun intended. Oh. but um, Boom. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so because Gertrude told everyone that Sylvia was promiscuous and all these things, she made Sylvia strip completely naked in the living room. And, okay, so remember how she would collect the, like, the bottles and stuff Mm -hmm. for money? So she, Gertrude would say that she wasn't actually collecting the bottles for money. She was performing sex acts for money. Yeah. And so she would make her come in and strip down in front of all the sons. And I'm wow. sure, I'm, I mean, and this is me ad-libbing a little bit, but I'm sure, like, that coy shithead, mm-hmm. you know, all these boys make her strip down from them and then make her masturbate with the soda bottle. <gasps> no. Yep. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, my gosh. Because that certainly makes sense. You're accusing her of being promiscuous and all these things. So make her strip and then insert a fucking glass Coke bottle. In August of 1965, a couple moved into the house next door. And the couple was like, oh, my God, this lady has so many kids. She would be a great babysitter. Oh, God, no, please, no. And so she, they were like, we need to hire her to care for our two kids. And so they had a little backyard barbecue just so everybody could kind of get to know one another. A little, you know, meet and greet. And <laughs> Meet and greet. <laughs> so while they were there, they noticed that Sylvia had a pretty big black eye. And Paula was like, hey, 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 I'm the one who gave it to her. And so after she just like boastfully was like, it's me. She went up to Sylvia with a glass of water and just like threw it in her face. <gasps> Oh, my God. And so neither the Vermilions, where that was their last name, the couple that moved in, didn't say anything. Two months later, the wife of the couple that moved in went to the house to, like, borrow something. And they, when she was there, she noticed that Sylvia was walking around, like, in a daze with swollen lips and a black eye. Oh, my God. And um, Paula was like, oh, this is how it happened, and showed her. Took her belt off and beat Sylvia with a belt to demonstrate how that happened in front of that lady. And she still didn't report it. Oh, I have no words. Uh Uh-huh. So not long after that, Sylvia came home from school. She's still fucking going to school. I I just can't even. I don't know. I don't. I I mean, the the fails throughout this of reporting and, you know, because. God bless her. Sylvia's not going to. I mean, yeah, she's I, been I beaten into compliance, yeah. you know. But the people, the school, the neighbor, the blah, 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 the, the amount of people that came in from the neighborhood to participate. Like, yes, people need to get a fucking conscious. Yes. 
Although it was a time and you mind your own business kind of thing back then. Mm-hmm. So Sylvia came home from school and she was like to Gertrude, I need a sweatsuit for gym, for gym class. Like I have to have one. And Gertrude was like, well, we can't afford it. And so Sylvia was like, fuck, what do I do? And so she stole one from the school so she would have one to wear. Well, Gertrude is like, where the fuck do you get that? Oh, my gosh. And so Gertrude basically beat it out of her. So she finally confessed. And then that segue segued into Sylvia is a sex worker and she's a whore and she's all these things. And so she beat her in the vagina again for the the theft to cure her, quote, sticky fingers. She burned the tips of all her fingertips with a lit cigarette. Are you kidding me? Nope. From all the abuse, like the kicks to the vagina and just all of the abuse, Sylvia began to lose control of her bowel and bladder. Oh, God. Poor baby. So when she would sleep at night, she would wet the bed because she, could, she couldn't she yeah. could not do it. I mean, good God. There's no telling what was wrong with her, no. you know? So Gertrude decided that Sylvia was no longer to fit to live with anybody. And so she tied her up and locked her in the basement and kept her naked. Are you kidding? Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. So. Meanwhile, carnival parents are. Just checking in every so often, sending 20 bucks a week. They're paying for torture of their children. Mm -hmm. There was no toilet in the basement. And so Sylvia was forced to defecate and urinate on the floor. But it was also because, so she kept her, like, naked and all of that and the lack of a toilet because she said that she's she's going to keep her that way until she learns how to stop soiling her mattress. Oh, my gosh. Around this time is when Sylvia's, quote, bathing regime to cleanse her of being a, quote, dirty girl came in. And that's when she would put her in the bathtub with scalding hot water Mm -hmm. she would bind sylvia's wrist and ankles and then dunk sylvia into it so there was no rhyme or reason to when she would get the baths like it wasn't like oh hey you've been in the basement with no clothes on and shitting and peeing and you know like an animal here let's get a bath no it was sometimes she would have a few a day sometimes she'd go days without it it was just it was Mm -hmm. there was no rhyme or reason to it That's like flowers in the attic style. She would also get handfuls of salt and like rub them all over her body. Literally salt in the wound. Mm Mm-hmm. It's the same for a reason. Oh, my God. So. Fuck um, this person. I know. The only time that Sylvia was untied from downstairs was when they would do the, the baths. Or if she or one of the other... Or one of the kids in the house wanted to beat her. Also, Gertrude's kids would make Sylvia climb up the stairs just to push her down. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, around this time, there's a a neighborhood boy, 14-year-old Ricky Hobbs. And Gertrude basically hires him as her personal assistant. So... This was a kid that was, you know, an honor roll student, middle class family, never got in trouble before. But all of a sudden, he's like Gertrude's bitch, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, like he's under her spell, does everything that she says. And so some people think that maybe Gertrude and Ricky were having, yeah, like were lovers. But she had, listen to this, Gertrude got Ricky to help her. Write out the words, I am a prostitute and proud of it, on Sylvia's stomach. And then they heated needles and burned the words into her flesh. Are you, oh, wait. Mm -hmm. And then she had Ricky, like, finish the job. And then Gertrude would basically taunt Sylvia, saying that you're never going to get married. Nobody's ever going to love you because of the words on your stomach. And then she forced Sylvia to write a letter to her parents, like, quote, confessing of all the sex acts that she had 
performed for a gang of boys and then blaming the boys for her injuries, including what was on her stomach. Then Gertrude gets an idea. She's like, hmm, I feel like we could probably make some money off of Sylvia. Oh, my gosh. And so she started charging the kids in the neighborhood a nickel to come and just stare at Sylvia's nude body or to put just push her down the stairs. Are you, I can't even comment. She so she was at this point she was always naked. They really never bathed her. She was very rarely given food. But when she was given food, it was something weird like they gave her soup but they made her eat it with her fingers. Oh my god. You know, so it wasn't there wasn't Yeah. It was basically just enough to keep her alive. God bless her. Gertrude and her 12-year-old son, John Jr., would make Sylvia clean the basement. I'm doing air, co- air quotes on clean. Where she would have to eat her own feces <clears throat> and drink her own urine that they made her collect. What the fuck? Mm-hmm. Okay, sometime around this, Jenny, her sister was able to send some contact to their older sister, Diana. Remember, she was the one that was, like, married, had a family of her own. Yeah. Jenny told all of the stuff that was happening, and she told Diana to contact the police to come rescue them. But Diana thought she was lying. Oh, my gosh. Thought that she just was making up stories because she was being punished in her new house and didn't like it. I feel like even if you thought that they were lying, still do your due diligence. Yes. Well, one, this is the first time she's wrote to you. Mm-hmm. Why would she be making up this crazy fucking shit? Mm-hmm. And, oh, God. But, yes. <sighs> God. Then, around this time. I hate people. Uh-huh. <laughs> then, around this time, one of the neighborhood kids, her name was Judy Duke. She, oh, yeah, the mm-hmm. one who beat her up. Mm-hmm. She told her mom that they were beating and kicking Sylvia. And the mom replied that that's what happened when someone's punished. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. So, I can only imagine they're fucking, if they had this neighborhood app or whatever that's mm-hmm. called, what they would be like, Sylvia's being beat again. Come on down. Mm-hmm. Five nickel per look. Okay. So around this time, the... Preacher, he was starting a program where he would go see each of the parishioners at their house. He and Gertrude drank coffee. She would complain to him that Celia had been an intense burden on her. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. She said that Sylvia was a sex worker who... Like, calm your fucking tits, Gertrude. Yes. That should be a meme. Calm your tits, Gertrude. Like, fuck. (laughs) But she said that Sylvia was pregnant from being a sex worker. She's been pregnant for five years. I know. But meanwhile, though, it was actually her oldest daughter, Paula, who was pregnant. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. Of course. It's a miracle baby, though. And Gertrude insisted that her daughter was a virgin and that Sylvia was attempting to pass off her own misdeeds on to pure Paula. Oh, my God. That's not how this works, Gertie. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> that just laughed at you, Gertie. <laughs> Gertrude asked the Reverend to pray for Sylvia's salvation before he left. So then he came back a couple of weeks later. Why don't you go downstairs and pray for her mm-hmm. and see what she's in? Uh huh. Okay, I'm moving on from that because it aggravates me. Why? <laughs> no, just basically, she told the pastor, preacher, whatever, Reverend, whatever the fuck he is. That she had to pray for her because she had hatred in her heart for Sylvia. Oh, my God. And he was like, no, 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 no. It's the opposite. Because he, she was, like, trying to make her better, you know? Oh, Because she's all good at the game. And so it's just yes. like, oh, fucking A. Not long after the preacher visit, the sister Diana came to visit. And Gertrude would not let her come into the house. She said at first that their dad had contacted her and said... Do not allow Diana into the home. And when Diana was like, what? Gertrude was like, if you come, I'm going to call the police and have you arrested for trespassing. So Diana decided to hide until she saw Jenny outside. And when she went up to Jenny, 
Jenny told her sister, like, we're not allowed to talk to you. And so she ran. And so Jenny ran away. Because, I mean, shit, she's terrified. She, she knows what's going to happen. She's yeah, probably, she knows. You know mm-hmm. what? She's like, no, I'm not going to get beat, but they're going to beat Sylvia. And, and yes. I'm going to have to beat her or something. Yes. Yes. So because of that interaction, Diana contacted social services. Thank God. When the social worker got there, Gertrude said that she had kicked Sylvia out of the house for being unclean and a sex worker and that Sylvia ran away. And that also the social worker said in like another article, it said the social worker said that there was an anonymous report of a quote girl running around like with sores on her body. And when she like questioned it, Gertrude said that Sylvia, it was Sylvia and she did have sores on her body, but it was because of poor hygiene. And like that was part of when she threw her out of the house too, because oh my gosh. because she was unclean and that she was a sex worker. Please tell me she searched the house. So while the social worker was there, Gertrude got Jenny alone long enough to say that if you tell the social worker the truth, you will then be locked in the basement just like your sister. And so when the social worker asked Jenny, Jenny was like, yeah, she ran away. But still search. I don't know that they can. I mean, I don't, I mean, you know what I mean? I don't know what the. They have to be able to. If you're like, yeah, we have to get this kid. Oh, no, they ran away. Oh, okay. Bye. Yeah. Like, no. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I wish, I don't freaking know. But so the social worker went back, filed her report and said no other calls are necessary to the house. Oh my gosh. And not to blame Jenny, Mm -hmm. because I get it. It's just like, God, I wish I wish that she would have just been like, this is worth it. Like, mm-hmm. whatever has to happen, yeah. I'll be down there at least with my sister. Yeah. I mean, I, I get it. Like, I mean, I don't get it. I was going to say, no, you don't. God. But, yeah. But, I mean, I get why she didn't. Like, I understand. I would do the same thing. I know. I, like, I'd be like, I don't. Who the fuck is Sylvia? Yeah. Like, I don't even know who that is. What? You know, but... Gosh, it's so close. Mm -hmm. Well, so at this point, this is when Gertrude starts planning to get rid of Sylvia. She started developing, like, she was going to kill her. She she started deciding where she was going to dump the body. Hell, just do it in the basement because no one goes and looks down there. For real. She was going to do it in a remote area, like dump her body in a remote Mm -hmm. area. Use they were gonna. She was gonna use the letter that she made Sylvia write earlier mm. as evidence of her innocence. She had an alibi ready. She taught it to all the kids. Around this time is when she started treating Sylvia with like weird kindness. Like in between the bouts of beatings, Gosh. um, she would offer her like sandwiches or crackers, and but then would be like. Eat your shit and drink your pee. You know what I mean? So it was like, it was weird. And then she allowed her to go upstairs and sleep in a bed a couple of times. That's almost worse. I know. But then would like keep her tied to the bedpost. Yeah. And then still wouldn't let her use the toilet. And then when she continued to wet the bed, because, you know, you destroyed her fucking bladder, she can't not wet the bed. She would beat her again for it. So Sylvia overheard Gertrude's plan to kill her. Oh my gosh. And she was like, oh, fuck. Okay, this is this is it kind of thing. And so she, so on October 25th of 1965, Sylvia knew that the time was coming. And so she was like, this is, this is it. So she tried to escape. One article said that she ran towards the front door, but she was so emaciated and mutilated from the beatings that she was too slow. And... Gertrude was able to grab her before she reached the front door and drag her back into the house. Oh, my gosh. Another story of how it happened was after this one particularly bad beating, they beat her with a curtain rod in the face and threw her down the stairs into the basement. She was tied up and then and beaten in to where she was unconscious. Oh and so when she came to, this was the October 25th, she wasn't able to speak intelligibly. Mm-hmm. Or really move well, but she was trying to escape. So she was like climbing up the stairs trying to escape, Mm -mm. but she collapsed on the floor before she even made it. 
when Gertrude found her, she crushed her head with her feet and then just stood there watching her. Oh, my God. The next day is when Sylvia finally passed from her injuries. Oh, my God. Um, She was only 16 years old when she died. Fuck. Stephanie and Richard, the neighborhood boy that helped carve, found her body. Stephanie tried to give her mouth to mouth, but Gertrude told him to stop because Sylvia was, quote, faking it. Oh, my God. But, of course, she wasn't. Right. So when they realized that she really was dead, Gertrude sent Richard to call the police at a nearby payphone. So when they called the police, that's when Sylvia had them bathe her one last time, dress her, and put her on a mattress. Like, so she looked lo- so she looked cleaner and stuff mm-hmm. than she was. When the police got there, she gave them the letter saying that she had been a sex worker with, like, a gang of men and blah, 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 blah. That Sylvia was uncontrollable and promiscuous and that she said that Sylvia had come back to the house and... Like, she, when she came back to the house, she had that, quote, gang of boys with her. Like, they had oh followed God. her back to the house, and that they're the ones that mutilated and killed her. And so, the police were shocked by the story, by the look of the body. When they were getting ready to leave, Jenny came up to them and said, get me out of here, and I'll tell you everything. Oh, my gosh. And so, the police were like, wait, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. And so they arrested Gertrude, Paula, Stephanie, John, Richard, and Coy. Yes, um, get them. For the murder. And then later, Mike Monroe, Randy Lepper, Darlene McGuire, Judy Duke, and Anna Sk- Cisco for injury to a person. Yes. So Gertrude, her kids, was it Ricky Hobbs mm-hmm. and what's-his-face Hubbard, Coy Hubbard, they were held without bail pending their trial. The charges against all the other little injured Mm -hmm. person, you know, injury to a person, those all those charges were dismissed. Stephanie's attorney got her a separate trial, and before it was to start, this district attorney dropped the murder charges against her. I guess because she's the one that tried to save her. She was like the 11-year-old that, you know... Okay, so the autopsy showed over 100 cigarette burns. Oh, my gosh. Various second and third degree burns, severe bruising, muscle and nerve damage. In, like, the throes of her death, she bit through her lips, nearly severing each of them. Oh, my God. Her vaginal cavity was nearly swollen shut. (gasps) Fuck. Although, listen to this. Although the examination of the canal determined that her hymen was still intact. Largely discrediting, of course, like along with the fact that there was no ripping or tearing or anything else, but discredited Gertrude's that she was a sex worker. Right. And also disproving clearly that she was pregnant. Um, (laughs) You got to laugh about that one. I know. The uh, official cause of death was brain swelling, internal hemorrhaging of the brain, and shock. Okay, so the case of the state of Indiana versus Gertrude, John, Paula, Ricky, and Coy started in May of 1966. The prosecution sought the death penalty. At the time, John and Ricky Hobbs were 13 and 14. Paula's time in court was interrupted because she had to go to the hospital to give birth to the child Uh that she and her mother insisted she wasn't carrying. Oh, my God. And as a show of just, I mean, solidarity to the fam, she named her child Gertrude. Oh, my gosh. Are you sure about that? Because you got it wrong I hate you. (laughs) That was a good one, though. (laughs) So there were a bunch of, like, there was a bunch of confusion and blah, 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 because there were, like, four different attorneys, but they were all trying to shift blame, and they were blah, but they were also being charged to, I mean, tried together. <sighs> Fucking Gertrude, piece of shit, was like, I'm weak. I'm chronically ill. I can't stop these kids from doing this. The kids oh, did it. fuck. And, of course, the kids' attorneys were like, it was all their mother. They're kids. But they said that, like, some of the most damaging testimony was from was because of Gertrude, like, talking about how Sylvia was a sex worker and, 
she was in all these, like, trysts with married men and blah, 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 blah. But clearly, oh, and that she would, like, start fistfights and all. But then, so they called her 11-year-old Marie to the stand to back her up. And initially, she did. But then all of a sudden, she screamed, God help me, before she admitted to everything. Said everything was a lie. And then she went on to tell everything. Oh, my God. Go, Uh go Marie. And so... Gertrude was found guilty of murder in the first degree, although she did not receive the death penalty. She did get life in prison without parole. Paula was sentenced to second degree murder. She appealed and was given a new trial, but before it began, she did a plea bargain, bargain, pled guilty to voluntary manslaughter, and served three years in prison and was paroled. Oh, fuck. John, Ricky, and Coy were convicted of voluntary manslaughter and sentenced to 18 months in juvenile detention. Oh, just that. Mm Mm-hmm. So, by this time... Okay, because you remember, Ricky Hobbs was only, like, 14. Mm Mm-hmm. So, by the time it was time for him to get out of jail, he was 17, and that was kind of when the severity of everything sunk in. And he suffered a nervous breakdown. And how he dealt with it was he was a really heavy chain smoker, which destroyed his lungs... And by the time he was 21, he died of lung cancer. Wow. Gertrude was granted a new trial. She appealed, was granted a new trial. She was found guilty this time, but she was sentenced to 18 years to life. She became a model prisoner, working in the sewing shop, became the den mother to the younger inmates. Ew. By the time she was up for parole in 1985, she had earned the nickname Mom. Ew. So when the the news of the parole hearing in Indiana came out... It was a disaster. Jenny and her whole family came out on the television to speak against it. There were a bunch of, like, anti-crime groups that came out, picketing, yada, yada, yada. They got, like, 4,500 signatures from citizens in Indiana to keep her in jail. Oh, my um, gosh. Beside, but with all of that... She was fucking granted parole. Are you kidding me? Uh Uh-huh. During the hearing, she gave the following confession. I'm not sure what role I had in it because (laughs) because I was on drugs. I never really knew her. I take full responsibility for whatever happened to Sylvia. Oh, my God. Fuck you, Gertie. Uh Uh-huh. So, on December 4th, 1985, she left prison and traveled to Iowa under the name of Nadine Van Fossen. She died there of lung cancer in 1990, so five years later. We don't really know much about the kids. We know that Paula moved to Iowa under a new name. Internet rumors say she's still alive and lives on a farm somewhere. Stephanie became a school teacher. Oh. Under an assumed name. She's probably in the fucking internet being the one who, like, hurts the kids. John changed his name to John Blake. He became a truck driver and a real estate agent and a minister, a lay minister. He was never arrested again. Marion had three kids and lived in anonymity, only surfacing briefly in 1998 in the wake of the Jonesboro Massacre to speak for the first time about Sylvia's murder, saying that he took full responsibility for his role and that a harsher sentence would have been more just. Oh, okay. Well, go back. Uh huh. Yeah. So that's it. Doesn't that make your fucking blood boil? Oh, I, I yes. I should have just ended it with <laughs> they were all arrested and went to jail. Oh my god. But no. Mm mm. No, because sh- oh, that was a that was a good one, but a bad one. Yeah. It was. I, I hate the way it ended. Like. Mm-hmm. I hate the way it ended. Yeah, it's like one of those movies where you're like, okay, okay. I can't wait to hear what happened. They're caught, yeah. Yeah, and then it's like, oh. They fucking fuck. got released. Every every last fucking one of them. Like, include, like, okay. The kids, I don't like it, but now, Paula, she too fucking old. Yeah. The second kid, can't remember her name, she's too fucking old. You knew better. No. Mm-hmm. But I can understand not wanting to sentence, like, a 13-year-old to life in prison. However, when he carved shit in and burned shit in, and not like a brand, which I, is not any better, but like, but um, not like like a just like a one time, yeah, hit. it's like a well, and it's like it's not even fucking song lyrics. It's terrible shit. Well, in this one part that 
I read to Donna when we were on a little break. I didn't lean in, but it said that like when they carved the stuff in her stomach, basically not only the carvings, but the amount of third degree burns that she had, even in with modern day plastic surgery, you wouldn't have been able to fix it. That's so sad. And so it's like, okay, whatever about the kids and their sentences. I mean, that's, it's awful and whatever, but fucking Gertrude, right? that bitch should have rotted in fucking prison. However, Brandon Dassey is still in prison. Mm-hmm. Like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. You know, that, oh. Adnan still in prison. I mean, like. Yes. Oh, like, oh my God. But, but she, and I want to know. Why she? Why they got the new trial? Like, what was it about the first trial that made them yeah. win the appeal? Yeah, this probably had something to do with the fact that they were all tried together, all had different attorneys. Mm-hmm. It was probably to do with that. But it's like, whatever the technicality was mm-hmm. that got them the new trial, like all of that, and this bitch fucking gets out after however many years. That's so fucked up. So fucked up. Like, someone died. A kid. She was 16. Oh, my God. Can you? I cannot even. Um, I I could not have survived one day. No. In this girl's life. No. Nor should anyone. No. And she did it for a Years. long time. Years. Ugh. Ugh. I hope she's at peace. I really do. Golly. Okay. Whew, that was heavy. I hope yours is not heavy. Um, but it is. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I mean, I guess there technically could be a trigger warning with this one, too. But not anything. One, it's not in detailed. Like, yeah. Like, detailed out. Yeah. Like that. So, it's easier to... Digest. hmm Yeah, who knew that my, uh, absolute... <laughs> fuck up. Would turn into, an, well, more fuck ups. <laughs> Well, I, I'll raise my hand. I knew that would happen. <laughs> this bitch. <laughs> Tally for Donna. <laughs> yeah. So, sorry with all my fuck-ups. Not as big as the fucking justice system Touché. with Gertie. Touche. Once upon a time, in a far away northern part of Northumberland, England, lived a princess in a castle. There was a castle. Ooh. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, there were princesses, but uh, that's not what we're talking about. Okay. You're it- about the frog. <laughs> uh-huh. It's called Chillingham Castle, like Chillingham mm-hmm. Castle, but Chillingham. Mm-hmm. Also, while I was writing this, I kept going, Chillingham, Chewingham, Chillingham. <laughs> Chewing gum. As far as she didn't message Will, be like, can you say this to me? <laughs> well, here's hoping, because everything I listened to was British, and yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They didn't say chewing gum, though. No, they didn't. mm So it looks like something, picture a sandcastle that you build, mm-hmm. and put it in beautiful land, like lush land. Beautiful. Like, ever after. Mm -hmm. Like, giving me life. Mm -hmm. However, within the walls, lots of lives were taken. Oh, dun-dun-dun. Did you write that down? No, but where is my dun-dun-dun, Will? Where is it? (laughs) (laughs) Surprised you remembered for the next episode. (laughs) You wouldn't have if I didn't. I was going to say I didn't until you did that. (laughs) Okay, so it was built in the 12th century. Like I said, the northern part of Northumberland, England. They drink with their pinkies up. Umbrellas and cup. <laughs> Damn. I know. That's a t-shirt right there. Mm, I like it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it was originally intended to be a monastery, which also made me think of Ever After. Mm-hmm. Key part if you haven't seen that movie, go fucking see it. Come back. I'll give you a whole oh, favorite part. But since 1246, God. like way back in the day. A couple of years back. Mm-hmm, it was owned by the same bloodline. And not all of them were very nice. 
It was the distinguished Gray family. As in the T? It as is. As in the Earls? Yes. Of Gray? Yes. Nice. Way to steal my fucking thunder. <laughs> Thought we had to talk about it, but whatever. No, we're saving that for 2019. Today is still fair game. <laughs> Fuck. All right. And here's where Carrie's going to foreshadow the foreskin and fuck it all up. Premature ejaculation in three, two. Oh, you got nothing? Mm-mm. Tea. People drown. Tea bags. What? <laughs> Slap you in the face. I don't know. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. So they renovated this castle and they added a dungeon and a couple of torture chambers. Oh, as one would. Mm-hmm. Seems reasonable. Mm-hmm. Yep, and they were made of dukes, earls, and were mentioned in William Shakespeare's plays, like, Mm well-to-do, or much-ado about nothing. (laughs) See what I did there? Mm -hmm. And then I said, and we get Earl Grey tea from them, but we already know. Pop-up video, Carrie edition, (laughs) ruined it. It was the first line of defense against Scotland. And this is when William Wallace was involved. Mm -hmm. Do you know who he is? I know the name, but no. Braveheart. Oh. Which, William Wallace was not such a nice guy. Like Neither is Mel Gibson. No, true that. (laughs) But, you know, they tried to make him, like, I mean, he was a nice guy, but they made him more of, like, a hero. Yeah. Mm, This man... I'm not going into it because this is about him, but he ain't, like, haunting anything. That we know of? That we know of, yeah. But, like, mm-mm, mm-mm. Rewrite, rewrite that movie. Cause well, yeah, I was going to say, it's like every every movie like that about somebody yes. makes them look amazing when mm-hmm. they're usually douchebags. Yeah. Look at it, you, Stephen Hawking. Oh, for sure. All right, so we're going back to 1226... 1246. Close. But yeah, William Wallace, he's invading with the Scots on this side. And then that's where the dungeons came in because prisoners would be sealed up and interrogated Mm. in these dark little dingy dungeons. How many rats you think were down there? I don't even want to think about it. Men would have their arms and legs broken before being tossed down a trap door. Nope. Falling 20 feet into the dungeon below. And nope. Mm-hmm. And the... There's a lot of stuff I'm skipping over with the castle. Like, it was between between two countries. Like, it was just... That's where all the battles were yeah. had. It was fortified. It had a moat. And then it was filled up. Lots of shit. I'm just not going through this. Were there alligators in the moat? No idea. But did they tick tock like on hook? <laughs> well, never watched that. We, um, you don't, Peter Pan? Mm-hmm, I hate that. <laughs> She's, if y'all could see her hand <laughs> right now, it's like up in disgust, like, uh uh-uh. uh. Because that whole thing is stupid. Okay. Like, stupid. And yeah, Disney, I said it. That's like <laughs> the only movie that I can say that about. Uh, Disney was. Well, besides Snow White and Sleeping Beauty. Sleeping Beauty, I don't like. Yeah. I like Snow White, though. No, it's too blech. What? It's because you can't whistle. <laughs> that is true. And so you didn't enjoy the song. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, no. But Sleeping Beauty was dumb. Mm-hmm. Now, I do like Maleficent. Mm-hmm. That was a good one. Anyway. What is are, what is wrong with us right now? We have been on some serious tangents. You know why? Because that story you told was so fucking deep. It was so intense that we're like, yes. oh, Disney movies. We are the equivalent <laughs> of watching a Disney movie after we watch something scary. Yes. This is what's happening right yes. now. Oh, my God. It's like when Casey would watch, my sister, when she watches like a scary movie, she used to always watch Finding Nemo after it. That is so funny. And then, But she would always fast forward till after the mom died. Yeah. Mm-mm-mm. Okay. So the Gray family, they had eight famous recorded executions. Some were hanged, drawn, and quartered. Some were. What's drawn mean? Like when they. um, Sketch them out? (laughs) 
Yes. <laughs> they say, like, hold on, let me you, draw you, you like one of your French girls. You thought I was saying stretch because you had your arms out like, <laughs> yes. I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, oh you no, got that's no, not. No. <laughs> hold on, let me sketch you out, Bob Ross. <laughs> Happy little no, trees. I swear Happy I was about to say trees. that. <laughs> If you don't like that, just uh, change it up a little bit. Fix that or whatever he said. I don't know. Now I took a nap at that point. <laughs> Another thing Carrie didn't watch. <laughs> I totally used to watch him. Yeah, I mean, I watched him, but then... <sighs> and I'd be like, I could totally do that. I know, he made it look so fucking easy. Because he was just like scratching the fucking canvas. I know, with like, like a blade. <laughs> no. A sp- he had a fucking spatula, and he was, like, <laughs> painting. I know, and I'm like, I could totally do that. My trees are not happy, though. No. They're glum. Like, sad. Oh. While alive, they were cut down from the gallows to have their entrails removed. That, that's their intestines? hmm Still living, the failing body was cut into quarters. The head was displayed on city gates as a warning. Other members of the family, more fortunate, simply had their heads chopped off. Oh. Another thing about the dungeons. So many of the Scottish prisoners were trapped there. They were so starved that they resorted to eating Mm. the dead. Mm -mm. Oh, God. Ooh. Then, more desperate than that, they started to eat their own flesh. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I'd just die. I think I would just die. The walls of the dungeon are still covered with markings from the prisoners keeping track of the time that they've spent in there. And even keeping short diaries that are still etched into the walls. Mm -mm. Yeah. The torture chamber was built with a narrow sloping floor in order to drain the blood Mm. all the way easily. And it was run... Um, It was ran by a man named John Sage, who was like Dr. Fucking Evil. It was estimated that a thousand Scots died at the hand of Sage in his torture chamber. Oh, my God. Like, pretty sure that the toy box killer, he was like, John Sage is my idol. It Was he kind of, well, I was going to say, was he kind of like a that Nazi guy, mm-hmm. the doctor, but he yeah, did but more not expert. Really. I mean, yeah, experts. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, not that. Experiments, Experiments and stuff. Yeah. So, John Sage had been one of King Edward's best men in battle. He got an arrow through his, like, calf, and so he was too wounded to fight. He was relocated to Chillingham, Chewingham, (laughs) um, and he was now the official castle torturer. Oh. Mm Mm-hmm. And, boy, did he love his job. I mean. They say, do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Which is such bullshit, by the way. Okay. I had to put this in there because, you know, I'm an asshole. And he's an asshole, so I can be an asshole to him. Okay. But, okay, so he was given a nickname because, you know, arrow through the calf and Mm -hmm. injure. They called him Dragfoot because he had to drag his foot. No. Yes, they did. John Dragfoot at your fucking service. That, first of all, that's terrible. <laughs> like, oh, here comes Dragfoot. But then again, I kind of don't feel sorry for him. <laughs> He's dragging up the rear. <laughs> and you were only saying that because he was an asshole. Oh, yeah, totally. He deserves it. John Sage, fuck you. You and Gertie could have a, the time of your fucking life. In hell. Yes. So, a lot of his torture stuff can still be found today in the castle. What? hmm He is said to have Iron Maidens, which they say that's a myth. So, maybe he had something like it. But it's like, think of like a sarcophagus almost. Mm-hmm. But it has spikes inside of it. Uh-huh. And then when you go inside and you close it. It kills you. Yeah. Okay. I was thinking Iron Maiden, like, men in the Iron Mask. He yes. had women in Iron Things, like. Oh, he, oh, I was the, like, yeah, no, he, the man in the Iron Mask was a man. No, 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 but the, he yeah. had women with, like, iron on, like, waiting for him. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you know, me, straight to sex. <laughs> he had the racks, cages where prisoners would be left to the rats. 
uh uh-uh. Mm-hmm. Yep, where they would just starve, you know? Mm -hmm. But interestingly, though, like, you never said that they resorted to, like, eating each other alive. Yeah, no, their own flesh. Yeah, their own, and then each other after they've died. Yeah. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Probably because no one had the power to overpower somebody because they're all... Oh, God. Yeah. I can't. Um, uh, uh, uh. Then, some say that he would also cook them alive over a fire, <gasps> like not to eat, just to burn them. Yeah. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. It said that he tortured somewhere around fifty people a week for well over three years. Holy shit! That's like twenty five hundred people a year. Yeah. So like seven thousand. Yeah, 7, I think it was like 7,500 is what I said. Oh, did you? Earlier. Oh, well, look at me doing that. <laughs> Maybe I didn't. Maybe I just saw that. So when the war came to an end, he was like, you know what? I'm going to empty the dungeons of the men, women, and children that still <gasps> held captured. So he's like, <laughs> I'm going to be diabolical. The children were taken to the Edward room where they watched as their parents... <gasps> Were rounded up, no, led to the courtyard, no. and then he burned them alive <gasps> as the children watched from the window. No, then he went in armed with an axe and killed all the kids. What the fuck? I thought you were gonna say he like let them go and then like shot them with arrows. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah, you know how he like hunted like them? No, I know, but you know what I mean? Like hunted them? Yeah, like no. Oh my god. They say the axe is still in one of the stairwells at the castle, but did not confirm that. You, She cannot confirm nor <laughs> deny the presence of an axe. <laughs> so, okay. Then old John Sage, Johnny Boy, he accidentally strangled his girlfriend because they were making love on the torture rack. Oh. Mm-hmm. You know, as one does. Okay. To each his own. Uh huh. So it's like, hey, let's go have sex in the dungeon. That's um, my red room. Meanwhile, they forgot the safe word. Right. Meanwhile, forget the prisoners that are starving and rats that are eating them. Let's go have sex. She didn't say pineapple pin. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> I told you I'm going to try to find a way to oh, work it into God. every episode. <laughs> I've done it for the last three, I you think. You really have. So, okay. He ac- accidentally. Yeah. On purpose. Mm-hmm. He was like, she was like, can't breathe. He was like, almost there. So close, so close. And he's a guy who loves to torture people. So mm-hmm. who didn't see that coming? Right. <laughs> he came. It came. We got it. She died. Unfortunately, John's girlfriend's father was a border weaver. I don't know. It's like basically an outlaw you know, that has, mm. like, a gang. Ooh. hmm So he, like, gathered his gang and it was like, I'm going to fucking attack this castle if you don't kill John Sage. Like, he killed my daughter. Eye for an eye kind of thing. hmm So they're like, oh, fuck, we don't want to have this. You know, like, mm-hmm. I'm eating grapes. I'm doing shit. Like, can't be bothered. So he was publicly hanged from a tree on the castle grounds in front of a large crowd. Then the local villagers, they started cutting off his nose, (gasps) testicles, and toes as souvenirs. I'm sorry, what? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it rhymed. I'm just saying. Um, Yeah. And so he was left to die from his injuries as they watched, you know, and... Again, people were just taking hunks of him. So, wait, was he, he was hanged? Uh huh. And that didn't kill Mm-mm. him? Oh, Mm-mm. no. Which I mean is good for him because. N- no, because then he was chopped up alive. No, that's good. No, I know, but you know what I'm saying. Oh, though. yeah, yeah, yeah. For everyone else, that'd be terrible, but. Oh, God. For him to have a long, 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 painful death. Ugh. I'm okay with that, you motherfucker. Gertie could have been right up there next to him, and I would have been okay with that, too. I would have carved something on her, but I would have purposely misspelled it. <laughs> no, you um, would have. <laughs> I would have been like, oh, fuck, hold on. 
Let me just slice through this. Uh, any more can, skin? Yeah, I was going to say, can, can I get an eraser? <laughs> so with all of that shed, and I mean, again, there were so many battles here. Mm-hmm. So much death. Right. Like I said, the family was beheaded, like eight of them beheaded. Yeah. And shit, like lots of shit. So it's haunted. Of course. Of course. The Edward room or the killing room, which is where the kids mm-hmm. watch their parents. That's where the guests feel overwhelming sadness and the odor of human blood fills Ooh. the room. Yeah, because that's where he acts murdered mm-hmm. them. So, like, not surprised. Right. They have reported, visitors have reported having their hair pulled, arms scratched, and even being bitten by unseen jaws Mm. in the darkness. Then, of course, they have, like, EVPs and, you know, stuff like that, of course. It said, something I read that I was, thought it was interesting, it said that it was hell on earth. And many of the souls who lost their lives so violently and traumatically have continued to play out their final moments over and over again. And it seems as the castle itself is acting as a massive trigger object. So, I mean, which is true. Like, you know, you bring like a trigger object, whatever, Mm -hmm. but like it has these artifacts still in the castle. Oh, true. You know, like that axe, if it's still there. Right. The torture contraptions. Right. Right. On the castle's website, I found some little, like, recent visitor blurbs, and it said that, I felt this hand on my arm. It was the most friendly feeling, and I believe someone was trying to guide me to see something. No, it wasn't. Mm Mm-mm. Like, yeah, it's trying to guide you to the fucking Edward room so you Mm -hmm. can watch their parents being killed and then get axe murdered. It said that my camera would not take a picture of the orbs or the lighting, But when they developed their film, they saw all the orbs, but in different places and rooms. And it was just, like, all over the place. It wasn't just, like, one orb here, two orbs there. It was, like, you get an orb, you get an orb, over here, over here, over here. Another one that said that the guide told her not to be frightened, but she actually felt quite happy. And she did hear, like, whispering in the rooms, but, like, it wasn't scary to her. Like, it was, like, relaxing. Hmm. She might have liked ASMR. (laughs) Don't we all? (laughs) No. Unless their mouth is clicky. (laughs) A lot of people say there's ghosts that we don't see, and it's just the impressions of the air. So, like, when you feel heavy, Mm -hmm. you know, when it's... Super cold or just, like, dark. Like, beyond dark. Yeah. Very oppressive atmosphere. Which, hello, torture rooms, dungeons. Right. You know. These weren't happy departures. Right. Filled with loved ones surrounding you. (laughs) Yeah. In the chapel beside the great hall, voices of two men are often heard talking, but you can't follow them because Mm -hmm. it just trails off you know and you can really never understand what they're saying we need subtitles right especially with an accent (laughs) in the courtyard they say like when the moon light is bright you can really see not like apparitions but you can i guess your mind's eye really can see like where the battles were held and there have been some Figures spotted, Mm -hmm. but definitely a lot of shadows in that, in the battlefield areas and stuff, which, duh. Yeah. I feel like that's more of the residual haunting. Yeah. That way, so it's not, not personal, but you know what I mean? Right. Like, they don't show themselves, really. It's more. It it is what it is. yeah. Yeah. It's the energy still there. This is a strange fact, but I thought I would point it out because you know me. All about the weird. The park surrounding the castle is home to a herd of about 90 wild cows. And they have lived on that land since medieval times. What? Like, obviously not those 90, but... Oh, well, obvi. You know. But it is crazy because they have to be inbred. Mm -hmm. Because it's only these cows. Yeah. 
And it said that even today, the wild herd remains untouched and continues to grow. Like, but so it's just weird that usually they like would have reproduced to, to a part where they could not like, they couldn't function. You know what I mean? Like stillborns and stuff like that, but they haven't. And so it was just, they are saying it's weird that there's these cows around. How do we know nobody's introduced another cow or, I mean, if they're wild? I have no idea. No idea. Just saw it, read it. Yeah. Um, no, no, no. I know. It's, I know. I'm asking yeah. questions. There's no way you could know the answer to. Um, they counted all the spots, mm-hmm. made marks. <laughs> I mean, made notes. Mm-hmm. I was like, Betsy, one. Borden, two. <laughs> Borden's a type of milk here. The most famous ghost is called the Blue Boy. Or he's known as the Radiant Boy. He's really, he disappeared. His ghost has not been really seen since the 1920s. But he used to be there all the time. And he would be at the strike of midnight in one of the rooms, not open to the public. It would be, uh, it's called the pink room. They would claim sounds of a child in pain accompanied by his appearance. And the noises would always come from the wall. The cries would die away, and then a bright light would appear near the bed. And this halo gave him the alternate name, the Radiant Boy. Some guests describe seeing the young boy dressed in blue, and the witnesses say that his clothing dates to the 1660s. That's way after the 1200s. Yeah. So in the 1920s, workmen cut a passage through the tower rooms on one of the other sides. They unearthed the bones of a young boy in the wall, Mm. and fragments of blue fabric lay Mm. with the skeleton. Also, they found papers that were property of Lord Grey at the time, who was trying to help the Spanish overthrow Queen Elizabeth I. And so he was trying to get the documents to the Spanish, but the boy had found the papers first. So, to prevent his speaking, he sealed up the boy (gasps) in the wall with the documents. What? Yeah. And this is what's so sad, that the bones of his fingers had been worn away to the nubs, evidence that he had attempted to scratch his way out of his tomb. Oh, my God. Yeah. And so, when he's seen in the pink room, it's it's where his body was discovered. Oh, my God. His remains were buried at the church, and very seldom people will say they've seen him or a blue flashing halo in, like, yeah. the wee hours of the night. But he hasn't really been seen since the 1920s. Then there's one called the White Pantry. It's a white lady in the inner pantry. And she's a frail figure in white. The silver was stored there. And there was a footman that was employed to sleep there in garden. So one night when he was like, okay, going to get some Z's, he was like, it says accosted, but you know, like, she was like, sir, sir, yeah. pardon me. Um, oh, she's oh, French. She's French. Okay. <laughs> oh, shit. She was very pale and begged him for water so he thought it was one of the castle guests he turned to obey and then suddenly he remembered he was locked in and no visitors could have possibly gotten in Hmm. and so that same figure the white lady Mm -hmm. is seen today and it's thought that the longing for water suggests that she was poisoned oh yeah but why, though? Like, I mean, with the graphic nature of all the other deaths, I wonder why she was poisoned. She was probably, like, one of his mistresses oh, or some maybe. shit. You know what I mean? And she was probably poisoned, for, like, by the queen or some shit. You know? True. That's just me riffing here. Yeah. You know, of all the... What's it, that What's that show I made you watch? Well, I don't know. I was just going to say, with all your experience as a royal... <laughs> Rain, that oh, show. Yes, I know. That's all I'm thinking about. Yes. Like, can't you see that happening? Mm-hmm. 
Okay, then there's a gray lady. So, okay, the gray lady, she's thought to be Lady Mary Berkeley, and she was married to Lord Gray and abandoned by him for her sister Henrietta. Oh, no. Mm Mm-hmm. And he, he was a deserter. He deserted, like, his, the Duke of Monmouth. Yeah, just all this, you know what I mean? And so he actually stood trial in 1682 for seducing Henrietta. Mm. I don't know what came of that, but he did. Nothing, I'm sure. Yeah. He probably, like, she was asking for it. She wore a Mm -hmm. short dress. Mm Mm-hmm. No, it was probably like, she showed her forearms. (laughs) This is 1600s. (laughs) True. So, Lady Mary, she died in 1719. And it said, perhaps her only triumph was outliving her feckless husband. What's What's feckless? feckless? (laughs) Will, what's feckless? He died in 1701 and her, and it said, and her faithless sister died in 1710. Fake. Faithless. Because, you know, girl code, family code, she Mm -hmm. doesn't, she's like, I'm sorry, Lord Grey. Like, he's circumcised. Feckless means lacking initiative or strength of character irresponsible. Oh, feckless. I'm going to use that. Somebody's going to be like, freckles? (laughs) I have freckles. What are you talking about? So after being abandoned, Lady Mary remained in the castle with her baby daughter. And they say that the silky rustle of her dress is still, like, seen and heard in the corridors. And that puts her in the realm of the silky. And they said, what's a silky? Because inquiring minds want to know. Oh, yeah. And it said, tales of these spirits are specific to Anglo-Scottish border regions. And in some tales, they tidy and clean around the house. Others are mischievous, playing pranks on their human housemates. I don't even want to clean in, like, real life. Mm-hmm. Much less in fucking the afterlife. Right. And if I got a silky, it would be the house pranks. Be like, True. Like, motherfucker. So they say that she only had her daughter for company, like her little baby daughter, and Like, did she run the household herself then? And is that why her, like, she's a silky, where Mm -hmm. in death she's still, like, tidying up and stuff? Yeah. They say that a lot of the stories where it includes Lady Mary's ghost, she's wandering the halls and she seems to be in search of her husband. Mm. And then witnesses who have heard the rustling of her silk bustle also describe an unearthly chill as she passes. Mm. And then some think she is this ghost that's known for leaving a painting, like stepping out of the painting <gasps> and going down the hall. No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. All I can think about is the ring when uh-huh. Samara like, comes out of the TV. All I can think about is a painting's eyes following me. Oh, God. The worst. Okay, the last thing I have is the lake at the castle. Like, super pretty, full of fish, which, ugh. But I do like this. Otters live there. What? Like, otters? Are you fucking kidding me? Love a fucking otter. In a lake? That's what they say. Interesting. I want an otter. Me too. Do you ever see those cute little videos where they, like, show them being, like, in a house? Mm Mm-hmm. They're, like, chilling in the bathtub and stuff. And they're, like, eating and they, like, make a noise when they eat. Yeah. That's the shit. I'm like, ooh, let me watch this. Yeah, Let me watch this. However, it said at night, it's an, like, very ominous feeling because... I mean, obviously, Lake Water is dark, and Mm -hmm. at night, darker. Mm -hmm. And it said that in the lake, remains of thousands of Scots (gasps) killed in the war with the English, their bodies would be bundled into a cart and then thrown into the lake. And so that water is rumored to be cursed, 
If you put your hand into the water, the souls of the dead will then pull you under into your watery grave. Nope. Don't even want to try it. Mm-mm. You can try it and see if there's a gator in there. No, I didn't ask about the <laughs> lake. I asked about the moat. <laughs> but, yeah. So, that is Chillingham Castle. Oh, my God. A.K.A. Chewingham. A.K.A. Torture City. Oh, my gosh. At the torture like, I can't even imagine the stuff that went on there. Yeah. And I forgot to say this, but it's parts of it is still open to the public. And some have, like, obviously rooms that you can stay in, you know. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. So they're called, like, apartments. Mm-hmm. But they're, like, holiday apartments. So I think it's, like, a condo. Well, I was know? thinking, like, a bed and breakfast. Like, it doesn't have yeah. some bathroom or whatever. Probably. So... Yeah, and I did not watch a lot of shows for paranormal stuff, but, I mean, I did listen to a few EVPs that were called there Mm -hmm. and stuff, but I thought just the little bit of history and the main ghost were okay for this one. Yeah, Will, book us a trip there. (laughs) (laughs) I'll bring the chewing gum. You buy everything else. Dang. What did we learn this episode? That I should do a better job (laughs) fact-checking. No. I mean, yes, but no. That's, that's like the, the zero in our three things we learned. That's the zero. Okay. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. the prequel Mm -hmm. of shit we should have known. Yeah, right. Um, (laughs) One, if a person has a lot of kids, that does not mean that they're going to be a great Mm -hmm. caregiver. That just means you're going to have a lot more mouths to feed. Mm -hmm. And your $20 are not going to your kids. Oh, for sure. You know? Mm -hmm. But, like, I say that to say, please, check on your kids. Never Mm -hmm. take people at face value. Mm -mm. Well, actually, yes and no. Because my number two was going to be, when people tell you shit, you know, check into it. Which kind of goes with, but like, yeah. take it, take them for what they're telling you. Cause like, yeah, Diana didn't believe Jenny's story mm-hmm. in her email or in her, in her emails. In right. Well, 70s, I mean, but. yes. Should she just be like, let me call the police? No, go in and check. But if she's like, she's ran away, I'd be like, okay, well, Jenny, you come with me. Mm-hmm. Get Jenny out and let her say it. And then fuck, let the police come. Call yeah. the police. I'm right here, bitch. Yeah. Like, and while you're calling the police, I'm going to be looking around. Right. Like, if I'm going down, I'm going down fucking swinging. Mm Mm-hmm. You know? So, again, not blaming anything about that. But I will say, check into it. But if someone's like, oh, she ran away. Yeah, they didn't. They never Mm -hmm. just ran away like that. No. In the history of people saying that she just ran away, did anybody ever actually just (laughs) run away? Right. Or if they ran away, like, what did you do? Like, why did they run? hmm Oh, I was just chasing them with a chainsaw. Yeah. Running implies that there was something that they needed to get away from. Yeah. Because as much as y'all want to make it sound like it is, running is not fun. <laughs> Second thought to the highest degree. Number three. hmm History was a lot of fucking torture. For real. I wonder, like, if we looked at it, what the crime rate would have be. Like, for, not saying that torture is the way to go, but just, like, just to see what they, like, what it would prove. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, would it prove that it's not the way to go and that it's better now or it's exactly the same or... I don't know what it would prove, but I do know that it would mean that a lot of innocent people were tortured. Oh, for you know sure. What I mean? Oh, for sure. Without that due diligence of mm-hmm. the checks and balances. I mean, even still now, are we have yeah. innocent people tortured all the time in in jail. You know, yeah. not tortured like these people, but well, that we know of. Yes, but you know, put in jail and yeah. yada yada yada. But yeah, I'm so thankful I do not live in a time where it's just like, oh. That's it. All right. You're going to be thrown down a trap door mm-hmm. where your legs are going to be broken. 
rats are going to eat on you if you don't eat yourself. Exactly. And you're going to die. Mm-hmm. But you're going to be tortured beyond belief. Oh, wait. That's also your story. True. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Fuck. That was a good one. <laughs> that was a good That was a good point. I liked that. I mean, yeah. I don't like it, the content, because yeah. holy shit, but... Yeah, it's just sad to see, like, a person in history that's known to be the most cruel person, and then you talk about your real-life person who years, centuries, yeah, just the same, like, in that girl, not that prisoners, you know, I mean, they were on a different side, you know, whatever, but it's like this innocent child you know, God. Yeah. At worst treatment, the same prolonged torture. Yep. As prisoners. Okay. So this week was a, a heavy one. A heavy, heavy one. And God, I don't know. Well, you know, this just makes you're gonna be listening to this Christmas Eve. So hug your kids, hug your family tighter. Be like, thank you for not torturing me. Hug your friends. Yes, hug your friends. Your friends that are your family that is family you chose. Mm -hmm. Just love and appreciate the people who are with you this holiday season. Yes. Uh, Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah and Happy Kwanzaa. Did I miss anything? Happy Merry Everything. Happy freaking Merry freaking everything freaking. No. (laughs) And remember. Creep it real and and don't don't get scared. scared.